welcome to the Meta Meta Sandwich. It's the same day I recorded this clip and all the other clips in this video, except for the first blue section, which I recorded like a week before everything else. Um, so now I'm drunk. The meta of this is, uh, if you couldn't tell, I was playing Counter-Strike at the same time I was playing a wingman match on Short Dust, the wingman map. Wingman is Counter-Strike 2v2s, which only go up to 9 rounds instead of 16 rounds, as a normal 5v5 does 16 rounds. And uh, here's the, that's the meta, is that because my... It's a sort of meditation in that my conscious mind was taken up. So I have like 2,000 hours or 1,800 hours playing Counter-Strike. When I play Counter-Strike, I, I basically... Like, I, it's something I'm very used to. It's like comfort for me, right? So by, by activating my my main brain my main conscious mind playing Counter-Strike, it freed up my subconscious in order to talk about, like, all of this shit without being impeded by my conscious mind. And therefore, I was able to talk about all this meta text in a sort of surrealist manner. As in... Um, surrealist as in the way the surrealists were interested in, in recreating dreams and subverting the conscious you know I, w I don't even know what this episode is yet I literally do not know what this episode is yet this clip will be in this episode I don't know what this episode is yet I don't know how I'm going to fit this in because I don't know what it is yet but uh and that's this is in there. This is in here. So I mean, you gotta do something with it. So that's that matter. You can also see the framing. If you were careful, if you observed carefully here, you would see there's a moment where I'm like, no one even noticed this shit, and I do make a strange hand digest gesture, strange hand digestion. I don't know where it is. Probably like here. I don't know, whatever, wherever it is, right? Because this whole thing is filmed at a Dutch angle. It's filmed at a Dutch angle. There's no way you notice that. Because you just assumed that this was natural. Nothing's natural, it's all a choice. I filmed it at a Dutch angle because it was a choice to film at a Dutch angle. What does Dutch angle represent? Oh, you would know if you went to film school. You would know if you went to film school, you fucker. <laughs> you know what a Dutch angle represents, even if you think you don't. Then I ranted for like a fucking hour just talking about myself. And it was awful. It's a god awful video. Just talking about myself. Shut the fuck up, bro. Shut the fuck up. And worse than that, possibly, is how much I talk about Digibro in this video. Like, God. I spend this entire video just comparing myself to Digibro. It's like I say in the end of this video, right? Which I'm assuming no one's watched because this is like an hour and a half long. So I'm just assuming. Sure. Digi, Digi is subscribed to this channel. So it's possible he's seen this video. It's crazy shit. It's crazy shit. Anyway, I just want to clarify something that I say, like, further on in this video, where I'm talking about, like, oh, man, I'm so cool. My music is so amazing. I'm like that guy, Digibro, whose music is shit. Right. I don't... The point, I see... See that basically what I mean what I'm what I'm trying to say here is I played you if you believed this I played you this was a purposeful lie 
This was a purposeful lie. See, I I completely disagree with everything I said there. And you can't tell, from, maybe you can tell from my facial expressions. But I am basically lying through my teeth when I'm talking about that shit, right? I'm talking about how, like, the only reason Digi's music gets comments that tell him he's shit is because his music is shit. I don't think that's true for a second. Well, let me tell you why I don't think that's true for a second. I didn't think that was true for a second when I was recording this a couple of hours ago. It's because there is no objectively good or bad art. It's all just whatever he wanted to make, right? People tell me my music is shit all the time. I have loads of comments on my SoundCloud and on my YouTube and stuff saying my music is shit. Right? I mean, not that many, but I have some. I have a significant amount, right? A, a not insignificant amount, I should say. People are gonna... Someone, no matter what music you make... Someone is going to think... Because if you make really poppy music that appeals to a broad audience, like Ed Sheeran, then people like me are going to say your music is shit. And if you make really avant-garde music, then people who like Ed Sheeran are going to say your music is shit. There's no way to win. This was the point I'm making here. But you can't tell, because even in my video that is supposed to be removing all abstraction... I am incapable of removing all abstraction and have to put in little secret nuggets of meta that will only be revealed in the next episode. And this is the next episode where I tell you that I was fucking with you the whole time. That I don't believe anything I told you there. That when I said the reason Digi's music gets hate is because it's shit. I would never get hate because my music isn't shit. That's clearly not true. Firstly, Digi's music is... Strange noises are happening. I don't know what that is. What I mean to say here is... It's all fucking subjective, bro. I was playing you for a fool. Because you... And why was I doing that? Why was I playing you for a fool? To prove point. And what point was I trying to prove? I can tell you what point I was trying to prove, but you won't believe me because it's too smart. It's too fucking smart. But, you know what? Here we go. I'm too intelligent. But I'm going to tell you what point I was trying to prove right fucking now. And watch this. Bam! Here's the point I was trying to prove. Here's the point I was trying to prove. That you will believe anything I say. That you, anything I tell you, you will 100% unquestioningly think that is what this person believes because I have bent the line between fiction and reality there is no line anymore anything I say now you will assume is what I think but this is all a character I'm playing because I'm talking to a camera and therefore whether I want to be or not and trust me I want to be is whether I'm pl is it because I'm talking to a camera I am necessarily playing a character right now I have a persona I am putting on whether I want to or not I have a persona I am putting on right I am a very dissociated person I don't assume things are real when people talk about suspension of disbelief and getting absorbed into a, a film or a book Actually, a book I could kind of do, a media, I'm baffled, because I never do it. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Do you think, are you delusional? Do you think this is real? It's clearly not real. This is, you know what, this is actually a good time to talk about my opinion on waifus. <laughs> <laughs> fuck Noam Chomsky. Motherfucker, name Noam, looks like a Noam. What's going on there? So, everyone knows, everybody knows I'm a big fan of Foucault, and everyone also knows I'm a big anarchisty boy. Noam Chomsky, anarchisty boy, had one of the most famous televised philosophical debates, which is not hard to do because they're not super common, with Foucault. Everyone knows it's an amazing debate. 
everyone's seen it. Noam Chomsky, later, another video, another time, gets asked about that debate. Because Noam Chomsky, after that debate, said, Foucault is the most amoral person he's ever met. Right? And uh, because because Foucault is a moral relativist, Chomsky explains in his later comments, he explains that uh, he doesn't like moral relativism in this extreme, what he calls an extreme form. He says, of course, morals meld differently over cultures, but it's not that everything is valid. It's that there's a, there's a little bit of variation in morality between cultures, but that doesn't mean that everything could possibly be seen as a moral right. And he essentially uses this weird, like, scientism in, in saying uh, the human brain is the same across cultures. It doesn't vary that much. The human brain can only fit a certain... It can only change a certain amount, and therefore morality can only change a certain amount. That's a fucking stretch. I don't understand what he's going on about there. But here is an... Uh, I think uh, Noam Chomsky doesn't... He seems to have a very strange way of looking at the world. I think he sees people doing things he doesn't like. And he thinks the only reason they're possibly doing this is because they're, uh, they're either, they think, uh, oh, this will be good for me. Uh, therefore, like, I can get money or power from this. Or they think he thinks that they are just, like, evil scientists who want to take over the world or something along those lines. That Bond villain type of person. This is why Noam Chomsky sees he's, he's like, the, gre the greedy people. Ba uh, you know, that sort of thing. This is a very common, again, among leftists to have this opinion. Whereas anyone with an, a little bit of sense in their mind can see and be disgusted and horrified by this fact that many of the world's greatest atrocities of like horrendous horrendous things that humans have done to other humans were done in the name of what the people committing those atrocities thought was a just right thing to do morally good action if you look at uh, the Spanish Inquisition horrific shit all done in the name of spreading what they see you know Christians converting people to Christianity is supposed to save their soul this is was done under the complete delusion that they were saving people right and all of this horrible shit uh, and, and I'm actually watching a video by Jack Saint right now Jack Saint great youtuber would recommend uh, but and he's talking about these uh, uh, boarding schools Native Indian boarding schools or whatever uh, that were set up during colonization, particularly in Canada, uh, where they essentially mass kidnapped uh, Native American children, put them in boarding schools and re-educate, like basically as re-education camps, right? Uh, with terrible living conditions uh, so that they, they would integrate into Western society better and not cause a fuss for all the colonizers. And he says, a chunk of the people running these schools genuinely believed they were doing this, that this was an altruistic action, that they were doing this to help these uncivilized people evolve as a culture and become civilized, become able to, to live within their world, right? Because according to the colonizers, oh, we're, we're the, the superior people here, we come along and we're bringing all this lovely technology and stuff to help you guys out. And, uh, if you integrate into our culture and, and convert to Christianity and all that shit, uh, then you'll be able to prosper much more under our care, right? That's what they think. Obviously, uh, everything was fine before they came there. It's a completely twisted way of looking at the world. Completely twisted way of looking at the world. But they 100% believed that they were doing the right thing because humans are only capable of looking at something from a certain perspective. And you basically have no way of knowing whether your perspective, what your perspective will look like uh, in future in history, like 
looking back at the past, you don't know what people will look back at you and, and think of your actions. Like, you can only look at it, and you don't know what people from other cultures will think of you. And you can't know. But especially the future. That morality twists in these weird ways that no one can really predict. Like, there's certain things that most... Uh, you know, uh, Chomsky talks about, he says, certain things are across cultures, across the world, like, across the future, across the past, oh, everyone always wants freedom and liberty. That's just not true. It's just not true. If, if you, if anyone has ever read any psychoanalysis, or, or knows basically anything about psychoanalysis, or anything about, you know, any any philosophy, like post, like postmodernist or modernist even philosophy, uh, you know that 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 it's all about trying to figure out why human beings seem to want to be dominated and have their freedoms taken away, have their more freedoms taken away. Why do human beings secretly wish to suffer? Why do we, you know, what cops inside our head? This is kind of what Deleuze is all about, right? This is what, in fact, this is what Foucault talks about in his. Uh, his little preface that he wrote for Anti-Oedipus and this is all about Foucault, it all wraps in right, trying to figure out trying to work out why and dis disperse you know, Foucault in his in his preface to Anti-Oedipus, he says that Deleuze and Guattari are the, the, like almost the ultimate anti-fascist because they're trying to combat the fascism within people's minds the uh I think it's fucking sick. I think it's all sick. I think Noam Chomsky is a fucking idiot and doesn't understand. He he is basically he's got too many fascists in his mind. His brain is full of cops. Uh, uh, here's a good example. In the debate with Foucault, his debate with Foucault, Noam Chomsky talks about how he's he feels a moral obligation to protest the Vietnam War, and we can pretty much all see that protesting the Vietnam War was probably a good thing to do at the time, right? However, protesting the Vietnam War, the whole hippie movement, right? A lot of that, like, this is this might be weird, but you can do a deep dive on the connections yourself here. So a lot of the hippie movement in the, in the, the 60s and 70s uh, so, was the birth of modern American uh, fascism. Uh, in particular, sort of eco-fascism. Th this came from the anti-Vietnam War hippie movement. This is the reason that, that eco-fascism is popular, these relatively popular these days, from the same movement that Noam Chomsky was a part of. Uh, you could, like, in fact, it's even more closely linked to veganism. Like, the first hippies that were vegans were also like a weird fascist cult. Uh, although my, I read that a long time ago, I might be getting something mixed. There's links there. What I'm saying is that there's, there is a, just because you're protest, like the, the look, you can look back on yourself and think, yes, protesting the Vietnam War was a good thing to do. Uh, but that movement was all, was all also linked to all these fucked up shit. Like, I mean, uh, the hippie movement was linked to the, the fucking, uh, the, 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 the guys that went around killing people, whatever his name is, Charles Manson, that's the obvious example. Uh, but lots of shit like all that eco-fascist shit and a uh, lot of fucked up shit happened in the hippie days. People don't really think about it. Uh, like, a lot of, uh, it was a lot of like peace and love on the surface, but underneath the surface it was very, there was a lot of cults. There, everyone knows there was a lot of cults. No one really talks about how bad this shit is. Like, there was a lot of sexual assault in the hippie days. Uh, it was all fucked. And it's all the same movement. So just because you can look back on yourself and get lucky that you're looked back on fondly in history doesn't mean that you... Oh, that must be because I'm the morally superior person. No. No, you just got lucky. All of these other people who were doing all the same shit at the same time also thought they were the morally superior person. There is no objective morality, and if you have some idea of objective morality, where are you getting it from? Because I know Noam Chomsky doesn't believe in God, so he's probably... I mean, the only, what, what, there's the, if you have some objective morality, where is he getting it from? Where is he getting it from? Is he getting it from from uh, from Kant? Is he, is he like a categorical imperative type of guy? In which case, that's stupid. 
I, I, I'm not going to sit here and explain why the categorical categorical imperative is is a is a flawed idea. That would take me like an hour, and also, I'm sure lots of other people who are far smarter than me have done it better. Uh, um, so is that it? Is he like a can't guy? Is he a uh, is it, where's he getting his vote? I don't understand. Is he, yeah, he, and he strikes me as the sort of person that would take, like, a, uh, one of those weird, like, pseudoscientific people who, who claim to have found some biological neuroscience proof of an objective morality, which never, never turns out to be true, it always turns out to be, like, uh, like, fucking eugenics shit. Uh, he seems to be that sort of guy. So, in conclusion, fuck you, Noam Chomsky. I'm coming to your house. I'm coming to your house. I'm coming to your house. Yeah, why, why, look, I don't want to say nothing, but, like, have you seen the guy? He, he's, like, 95 million years old. He looks like he's fucking wizened. He's fucking haggard. He's got, like, all sorts of shit. Just, just fucking let the Zoomers do philosophy, mate. Just, look, your, 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 your shit's boring. Your shit's insignificant and boring. You do some some pop, some pop shit. You do some pop philosophy. You basically, you know better than like Will Self or something, right? At least Zizek is like a funny meme. <laughs> like, if you look at like the, the pop, pop philosophers, what you got like Noam Chomsky, Zizek, Will Self, I think, is only pop, like a pop philosopher in the UK. I don't think anyone cares about him outside of the... No one cares about him in the UK. I don't know how he's known. He's he's a fucking idiot. Although, I think he's done some decent things. Uh, the, the documentary, The London Perambulator, I think is what it's called, is a really good documentary. Uh, Will Self is a... He's an interesting figure. I don't necessarily think his, his politics or philosophy are very... Good though, uh, Zizek. You know, Zizek actually has some pretty like Z Zizek's critique of, of ideology. Everyone knows that shit is flames. Everyone knows that shit is flames. I mean, personally, I don't think it's as it's as groundbreaking as he makes it out to be. But it's still fucking flames. And the best thing about Zizek is obviously that he has a sense of humor and is like a a yeah. You know, he's a good. He's a He's a good, funny, a funny character. He he tells jokes and shit. That's how I'm like. Once you realize that philosoph philosophers can tell jokes, and and like it fits in. Why has my hair been so weird lately? It's probably because I haven't washed in weeks. Um. Why am I talking about Zizek? Oh god, what tangent am I going on right now? And so on and so on. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Pure ideology, Bram pure ideology, and so on, yeah, oh, I've gone on a terrible tangent, what I mean is, all I mean to say here is, is, is fucking Noam Chomsky, you're a bastard, <laughs> you're a bastard, I'm coming to your house, me and Zizek, I'm gonna pull up on you with fucking Foucault's ghost, and bust a couple caps in your ass. I just love hypothetical ideologies. I love coming out with hypothetical ideologies. You know, some people's hobby is collecting stamps. Mine is coming up with ideas that someone could possibly think. Uh, currently, here's two of them. First, both of them are like weird variations on accelerationism. The first one is uh, people normally shorten various types of accelerationism. So like left accelerationism is L slash UCC, I mean ACC, L slash ACC, right accelerationism, R slash ACC, and there's a bunch of others. So this is called SJW accelerationism, SJW slash ACC. And this is how it goes. Um, uh, you basically... It's a double whammy switcheroo on the standard left accelerationist, uh, left accelerationist doctrine, which is essentially capitalism further push capitalism further towards the, the like its more extreme forms that it collapses sooner. Uh, uh, so the idea is if if 
possibly you'd met a left accelerationist, you wouldn't be able to tell because they would be acting exactly like the most ruthless capitalist. Uh, obviously, it evolved past that, but that was one form it took, right? This is SJW accelerationism. So instead of acting like the most ruthless capitalist, because in reality, that is not the form capitalism takes anymore. The form capitalism takes now in its most hegemonous form, that's hegemonic, its form, is neoliberalism, like a, a s smiling face. So this is what you do. You become a super uh, neolib, so really into identity politics and all of this shit, and really... Uh, like, basically every stereotype about this SJW boogeyman, right? The, but nothing about class or economics or anything. Only talk about... And not really enough, like, that you know what you're talking about. So don't actually have read any feminist, or you can read it, but don't act like you've read any, like, feminist, post-colonialist, anything like that theory. You just, you just do what everyone else... Well, you think everyone else does, which is just, like, you know, shout at white men for no reason. Obviously, this isn't what SJWs, if they actually exist, which they don't. Actually, they did call them... It's complicated. What I'm saying is, you're actually a communist. You're actually, like, a Marxist. But you pretend to not be a Marxist and to be a neoliberal, like a, a, a liberal feminist, white feminist, like a Karen sort of thing. Uh, because, and you go after, you go after attacking people and hashtag cancelling people as much as possible, because this gives the left a bad name, gives liberalism a bad name, pushes people further towards fascism in a combat, like, be to the point where you, it's, uh, like, clearly a problem, that people would see you and be like, fuck you, and the only antidote that they would see, obviously, is, is fascism. So you push, you push the, instead of just being like, I am going to go and become a hyper-capitalist, you instead become someone who is so abhorrent that you push everyone else that you meet to become a fucking right, far-right hyper-capitalist fascist. And they accelerate the collapse of capitalism, and eventually you get to instate your communist utopia. That is SJW accelerationism. It is playing the long game to an extreme degree. Uh, this one is also very similar uh, in that it's just a... You see that bad thing? It's good, actually. Uh, this one I call Afro-accelerationism. And this actually has already been... There's actually also already people talking about Afro-accelerationism. This is my white boy stupid meme take on Afro-accelerationism. Uh, basically, it's just... You know that neo-colonialism that China's doing in Africa right now? Just make that, just just make that really fucked. Just like, make it hyper authoritarian. Just, just like, fuck over them Africans. And then, the African nations that are being completely oppressed by the Chinese would, uh, you know, rise up in a overthrow in a violent revolution their their capitalist over like overseers and in state communism uh now this is is this maoist third worldism that's the question have i just reinvented third worldism that's the real question that's the real question here uh because this is all just a linguistic game to me none of these ideologies could ever possibly exist or well, actually the thing is in a sense they're hyperstitional in a sense they're hyperstitional uh, I discovered that it's way easier to make these videos these sacred cow videos when I'm drunk but I have to be really careful about when I drink because if I start drinking too soon I end up getting a really bad headache and wanting to die uh, before I sleep so I have to time it, I have to time my drinking so that I get drunk for as long as possible, but I fall asleep before the point where I would start feeling bad. And it's hard to, I think that's normally around like four or five hours after I started drinking. It's hard to say. It changes depending on obviously what I'm drinking, how fast I'm drinking, 
maybe even whether I had a meal, for example, something like that, how much sleep I had the night before, that's important. People don't understand that. How, like, a lot of hangover, a lot of the effects of a hangover are actually lack of sleep and uh, alcohol weakens your immune system, so you get, like, a basically a, a cold for, for a little while until your immune system boots back up. Uh, that's, like, a lot of the stuff that people assume is... Um, a hangover is actually uh, a mixture of lack and lack of sleep and weakened immune system, uh, and also, like, a lot of it is also being dehydrated and the fact that alcohol is literally metabolized into a poison in your body. <laughs> alcohol is great. Go love it. Literally metabolized into a poison. Uh, what was I talking about? Africa. <laughs> It's time to end this charade. It is time to end this charade. It's time to put an end to this fucking bullshit. Sacred Cow has gone on long enough. I was going to make fucking 12 episodes of this shit. I don't want to make 12 episodes of this shit. I am too busy to make 12 episodes of this shit. This is the penultimate. What you're watching right now is the penultimate. This is the penultimate. Sacred Cow ends next episode. You get to see the satisfying conclusion. And the satisfying conclusion will be revealed. I'll tell you what it is in this video, but not right now. Although you may have guessed already uh, if you were paying attention because I made it really obvious. Uh, what, so, the, what, so what was the point? <laughs> it was a Sacred Cow. Well, it wasn't just nonsense it was mostly nonsense but it was also about it was all about sending a message it was all about sending a message that uh, uh, more like uh, okay here's this thing i've been doing taking these little rants putting them together what if i made it a little more cons consistent confusing and uh, not confusing con 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 isn't the perfect perfect i'm working with here a little more, like, connected. Oh, it, did, it turns out con was the right prefix. Uh, yeah, what if I just, like, made that a little more connected, made more cohesive, cohesive, you know. There you go, there you go, cohesive. Uh, the nukes can't come soon enough. You'll see what that is soon. Uh... And so here we are, it's popping, it's popping, we made it, you made it, it's popping like Mary, you know what I'm saying, Mary Poppins, that was a joke, that was the thing. We got Lane by our, by our side, you got, we got Lane by our side, you know what I'm saying, we got Lane by our side, and nothing can ever hurt me, and nothing can ever hurt me, because nothing can kill me. Uh, uh, so... <sighs> the Sacred Cow only works when I'm manic. This is the problem. Is the right, you know, I'm tripolar. I'm tripolar. I'm the tripolar autist king, right? And the reason I'm tripolar, so I got the, I got the poles, I got the depression and hypomania and autism. Those are the three poles. Uh, right now I'm in a depressed, depressed and not that autistic. So probably like, here, let me do, a, do some gra graphics here. Let me do some graphics here. Uh, let me do some graphics here. Let me do some graphics. I'm trying. I, you know, I may come across as manic, and I'm a little mixed because I'm generally a little bit of a mixed kind of person. I'm just generally kind of a mixed person or a mixed bag, you know, a bit of a mixed bag of a person. But, uh, so this is the tripolar. Okay, so you got the autism up here, the mania over here, and the depression over here, right? Autism, mania, depression, right? This is where I am right now, probably like about there. I'm about there, right? Actually, maybe a little more like there. Like a little further inwards. Like, like a sort of, maybe like a here kind of situation. This is actually a more accurate one. This, this one. That's about where I am. 
So there you go, there's where I am on the tripolar scale. But when I made like episode the good ones, when I made the good ones, I was like here, right? I was like here. That's where you want to be when you're making the good ones. Far over to mania, far up into autism. Right now I'm not there and knowing how long my main manic and my cycles last, I probably won't be there for a couple weeks uh, again. And therefore, uh, it's time to nip this in the bud because otherwise I'm just going to be forcing myself to make this shit and it's not going to be good or enjoyable for anyone. Uh, and I, yeah. Plus, the reason that it's a bad thing is that I have... Uh, like, I'm, I'm busy for the, I have stuff to actually do, I have deadlines, I have uni deadlines. And so I'm going to be busy for a while, which will mean that I'm going to, if I have this to distract myself from them, I would, I would just be cowing and chowing instead of mowing and flowing, you know, and I need to be mowing and flowing and no sort of mowing and chowing and cowing. So, this is why the sacred cow must end next episode. I hope you've enjoyed your ride here. Uh, I've enjoyed it. I think this has been pretty fun. Um, but it's over now. Well, don't worry. <laughs> I mean, obviously things are going to come next. The Sacred Cow isn't really that significantly different from stuff I've been doing before anyway. Uh, so it's not really that important that it ends or starts anyway. Uh, what do you think? What do you think of that, eh? What do you think of that? What do you think of that, eh? You don't know nothing, do you? You don't know nothing, do you? I know things. I know too much. Anyone who isn't depressed is just lying to themselves. Uh. Oh my god! 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 Oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god, what's happening? What's happening, bro? What's happening? Where's the pen? God knows. Where could it be? Where could it be? Oh, it was in this hand the entire time. Oh, you didn't even know, you didn't even know. Bam! <laughs> Ow. I hurted myself. I hurted myself. We're gonna kill it, bitch. We're gonna kill it, bitch. <laughs> you saw nothing, and that's how you vanish a pen. Welcome to No Thank You's Magic Lessons. You take your pen, what you're going to do is you're going to do this, you're snapping your fingers action. So you do this, you do this, you do this, right? But you pressure it, and then you release it, so it goes really fast. And you mix it with a bigger motion, like that, and it seems to vanish. There's how you vanish a pen, is you, 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 you pressure it against your thumb, right? And then, and then you, you do a flick upwards, and then... It flies away, because you fucked up. That's going to happen a lot. Uh, so there's the there's the, 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 the tripoles. There's the Tripoli. There's a the Tripoloski. There's a the Tripoloski. And uh, the Pomposki. Uh, last night I had a dream that I uh, bashed my head in it, and there was a huge hole in my skull. I felt it, and I could feel that there was not skull there anymore. I could feel through the... that there was like... It passed my, my skin, I could feel the like broken bits of skull in a hole. I could feel a hole in my head right about here. I could I bashed my head in, I could feel it being not there. That's what I dreamed about last night. Someone asked me what my favourite node is on the uh, Lemurian Numogram. Uh, I think I would have to go with 9. I like that it gates with itself as 45. I like that it is a CZG with 0 and I like that it gates with 8 like eight gates towards it with a 36 i think that's pretty cool in my opinion uh so it'd probably be nine I, I like that it has its you know it's obviously no one you're you, you're tempted to say four because four for four gang but actually but i don't like the four is in like the central cyclical time loop i like the you know you've got to be outside you've got to be outside of the central cyclical time loop of course uh and zero seems like kind of overkill. Like I, I don't like the zero has no gates. First of all, uh, but yeah, so it'd probably be nine. Although I could, I could see myself getting into six. I could see myself getting into six. 
Uh, six is pretty cool. The the whole area at the top, I think, is pretty cool as well. Really, I don't have a favourite node. <laughs> I don't know why why I would have to say such a thing. I just think uh, it's all interesting. You can use it in whatever way you please, you know, for whatever purpose. You want to know what the... You know, know what the dealio is? I can tell you what the dealio is if you want to know what the dealio is. I can tell you what the dealio is if you want to know what the dealio is. Here's the dealio. So, last night, I... Uh, <clears throat> last night, I I completed my transition over from um, a hypomanic phase to a depressive period, right? Uh, and the way I noticed that is that I, I started playing CSGO as I um, generally tend to, tend to do and first thing I noticed is that I was I, uh, over the past few, like uh, the past week I, I was v like rapidly improved at CSGO specifically playing with a gun called the Scout or the SSG which is a sniper there are two main snipers in the game the AWP or AWP and the SSG or Scout uh, the scout, the, the AWP is a one hit kill to the body or head, uh, but not the legs, and the scout is only a one hit kill to the head, but not the body. Uh, the reason that they can get away with being a one hit kill and not being overpowered is because between each shot there's a lot of like cooldown. You you shoot and then it unscopes. You have to like it like rack the thing back or it like it racks the thing back and puts another chambers another round and then you can shoot again and that takes a long time so basically if you miss your first shot you're sitting duck until you can the, the gun has time to refire so the idea with the AWP is that's not too much of a big deal because firstly you're a sniper so you can scope in from a long distance making it harder for the enemy to hit you and you can pretty easily hit the from a long distance it's not that much more difficult when you're scoped in to hit the full body but with the scout you have to pretty much hit the go for the head uh, first time and if you're sitting at a long distance and you have to hit just the head which is a really small target to get that one hit kill otherwise if you miss you're sitting duck for the same amount of time but uh, yeah you you know even if you hit the body you're still sitting duck and you're basically fucked so the scout also has a higher movement speed and therefore for me at least it kind of encourages playing it a little differently from the orb also the scout is much cheaper than the orb which is why you, you use it because the orb is a, like an expensive buy that you it's kind of an investment if you buy an orb you better not die with it because that shit uh costs a lot of money you'll have no money next round if you die with it uh so <clears throat> the scout is much cheaper it's actually cheaper than even like the ak 4 so if you buy a scout uh, the way I would see it is that you should probably play from a closer range and go for flick shots towards the head because the scout has a higher movement speed so you can sort of run in, shoot and run out really quickly, hopefully hit your flick shot and then like dip back, run away, find cover somewhere. That's the way I play scout anyway. I don't know if it's the co it's not the correct way to play scout. If you're good, you can play it from a long distance, but I'm not that good. Either way, I started playing scout and I started getting really fucking good at hitting these flick headshots with the scout out of nowhere. I've never been that good with snipers. Suddenly I'm insane. And I'm talking some of the fucking most insane flick shots I've ever hit in my life. I was getting called a hacker like every game because I was hitting these insane flick headshots from close range with the scout, which is really fucking hard to do trust me if you if you play cs that is like a a top level skill that i well not top top level but for me like better than anything i've been able to do before so i'm suddenly hitting these crazy flip shots i'm like oh my god i'm a god in cs go i ranked up out of silver finally uh i mean i've done it before and ranked back down because uh, <laughs> i tend to go through phases of being really good at the game and then really bad so this is what happened. I was going through one of these phases where I was really good and I was hitting these crazy scout shots and then yesterday I tried playing a game and I was like, I'm not really feeling this. Everything feels kind of off. And I just was getting destroyed. I was fucking... I mean, our team still won, but I was like bottom fragging. I was like just playing terribly. I was missing like easy, easy shots that I would normally hit even on like a... Not even a good day. I was, I was just missing these stupid shots. And then because I was missing these stupid shots, I was getting frustrated and I was playing really aggressively to try and make up for the fact that I had no kills because it was like people on my team were being like yo come on man you pick up the fucking pace you're not 
helping us out here and I was like fuck I, 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 I feel like shit why, why, why can't I hit my fucking shots I gotta go hunt for some kills to try and get my fucking pride back and then the playing stupidly and aggressively was making me die even more often and it was just all going fucking pear shaped <laughs> it was all going wrong and at one point remember this is like 5am because I stay up all night so at one point I'm like I died in a fucking I, I got Zeus'd if you don't know Zeus is a like basically a meme weapon uh, the, you only get one shot uh, with it, uh, and then it like uh, you throw it, it has to, it, like it falls on the ground. You can't use it again. So if you miss your one, it, it's really cheap, but you only get one shot with it, and you can only do damage from a really close range, basically standing right next to someone. Uh, but if you do manage to hit them when you're standing right next to them with that one shot, it's a one shot kill. The problem being. Every other gun in the game, when you kill someone with it, it gives you a, a reward for killing them, so you can buy the next round. The Zeus gives a zero dollar reward, it's the only thing in the game that gives a zero dollar reward. So it's really hard to get that close to someone and to hit your one shot, uh, but it gives you no reward. Uh, so it's uh, basically just a meme gun. The reason it's a meme gun is because it's a, like, the Zeus is a taser, basically, and when you, when you Zeus someone, uh, the, when they, when you die from a Zeus, you you make a little sound that goes like ah, right, and so it's basically a, a, like a meme gun that you use to like to BM people, uh, and I got fucking Zeus, and normally I Zeus people, I like like go, I'm a I'm a little trolley bastard who likes to Zeus people, and when I got fucking Zeus, out of nowhere as well, I don't know how he managed it. Because he was, he had, I, I reckon there must have been two guys and I must have like, either way, I got Zeus in a really embarrassing way that I should have like easily killed the guy, but I missed all my shots. And I just screamed, like literally shouted, fuck, <laughs> uh, what the fuck? And then, uh, and I was like, oh shit, I can't be fucking shouting, it's like 5am. Uh, so that was bad. And then I, I literally just closed the game because I was so fucking mad, I rage quit. And then I, uh, so yeah. That's when I realized, oh, <laughs> this is, I've switched over from Mania to Depression because normally a Counter-Strike game would not be getting me this upset. It's just a fucking game. So this is how you know that, oh, something, something is bad, something is happening in my brain. And then I was just like feeling, I just felt like, shit, I need a fucking drink, bro. I need a fucking drink. So I, I go to the fridge and I grab, and there's a few, there's only three beers left in the fridge. Uh, because I've drank all the rest of the beers. There's only three beers left, so I, I'm, I'm like, fuck, there's three beers. It's only, like, what, 4 a.m. right now? Uh, this, and I sleep at, like, 12. These three beers are not going to last me till 12, and what are they even going to do? What the fuck? So I go grab the three beers from the fridge. I put on Mumbo Jumbo's latest video, uh, where he's building the central pillar. And so I, I'm like, at first I'm thinking... I should just like make these beers last I guess by slowly sipping them but then I start drinking the first beer and I'm like well hold on if I just drink these beers slowly and make them last for the whole night then I'm not gonna get drunk like I'm not I mean I'm not gonna get drunk off three beers anyway but I can at least try and like drink them fast so that I feel something I feel some sort of effect so then I'm like okay this mumbo video is about like 20 minutes long I should just try and say I finish all three beers in this, this 20 minutes. So I'm um, drinking these beers relatively quickly, obviously not th that crazy, but the other problem is that they would fresh out the fridge, they were way too cold to chug, I would have just got brain freeze if I chugged them. So I'm like, fuck, okay, so I'm, I'm drinking as fast as I can, but getting brain freeze because they're too cold. Uh, <clears throat> and trying to numb the pain with alcohol. Oh god. I'm getting messages. Uh, uh, numb the pain with alcohol. <laughs> I've been watching this Mumbo video, good video, Mumbo, good YouTuber. Uh, drinking like as fast as I can, not get brain freeze. Uh, and then I, I get down to the last beer, and I'm like halfway through the last beer, and I'm like, oh fuck. Oh, I just realized what I've done. Now I'm not gonna have any more beer for the rest of the night. I'm not like, uh, I'm buzzed enough that if I start if I start not drinking I'm gonna start getting like a headache because that's something that happens to me if I if I drink early in the night and then stop drinking uh, and like sober up I start getting my heart beats really fast and I start getting a really bad headache so I'm like shit what am I gonna do uh, what if somehow magically I uh, uh, my idea was okay what's the earliest that it would be like 
maybe somewhat socially acceptable to go to the shop and buy more alcohol because that's what I'm thinking right now is I need to be more drunk than this and I need to be not coming down and sober or I'll get a headache and not be able to sleep so I'm like what's the earliest I could probably go to the shop and it wouldn't be too fucking like weird looks and I come to the conclusion that probably 10 a.m. So at this point, it's like, it was, what, 5.30, 5.30-ish? So I'm like, okay. I just have to last till 10 a.m. off of these, these, this, this beer, this half a beer. And then I, I, I'm slowly realizing how futile this is. I'm also surprisingly buzzed off of those two beers, probably because I barely ate anything. Uh, I, I had, like, one meal that day. Uh... I'm going to try and sit down because my phone needs to be plugged in. Because it's dying of charge la loss. Chargelessness. So, uh, yeah, I'm trying to uh, make this, this half a beer last. And I'm like, this is not fucking happening. Uh, how am I going to last till t for like th the next few hours? Uh, what mo and I'm in the mood where I'm just like... So what had happened is someone had posted on some, some place, I don't remember where, a link to, the, earlier in the day, I'd seen a link to that, that archived 4chan thread from JP, where Noko from Shinsei Kamatichan, my favourite band, had gone on 4chan and started talking to people. And I've read that thread before, it pisses me off every time because the fucking janitors deleted, the th like, a bunch of posts for some reason. Anyway, I don't really understand what went down there, but from some some janitors deleted something, and then the entire thread just evolved into shit because it's 4chan. Uh, uh, so I, I'm, I, I'm because I read that thread earlier today. Uh, I ended up finding an, uh, a link to an unlisted YouTube video of an early Shinsei Gamata-chan gig where uh, Noko is like cutting himself on stage, he like cutting his face open with a knife and I guess that like stuck with me through the day because I'm just like fuck it I need to listen to some fucking Shinsei Gamata-chan I haven't listened to Two Mane in ages because I I listened to it way too much I listened to it a million times and it, the album sort of lost its you know when you listen to an album too much but now it's been ages since I listened to it so let me go back and listen to it listen to it again it's the perfect time. I'm depressed as shit. I'm slightly drunk. It's like 5 a.m. I'm the only one awake. Uh, I, I'm maybe not drunk, but a little buzzed, right? Uh, you know, two and a half beers is not enough to get drunk, so buzzed is probably the more accurate description here. Uh, I'm like, fuck, okay, so this, and it's the perfect album. It's It still is the best album ever made. It's just amazing. Uh, but then I'm listening to it, and I'm like, uh, you know, I get to the end of the album, uh, I, like, do some CSGO surfing while I'm listening to it after a while, because at first I was just laying back listening to it with my eye, like, staring at the ceiling, uh, but then I got bored and, uh, started playing CSGO surfing, uh, <coughs> and, uh, so that was kind of cool, I was kind of, it wasn't necessarily enjoyable, because I still felt like shit, but it was a, it was a good way to experience the album, uh, still, yeah, still, Definitely my favorite album of all time. But I got to the end of the album, and I was like, and I also got to the end of the beer, and I was like, fuck. Uh, what if there is one? What if somehow magically I missed a beer in the fridge? This is the only way I'm gonna survive. Is if somehow there's a fourth beer. If there is somehow a fourth beer in the fridge. If there is somehow a fourth beer in this house, then 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 I then then that will be the happiest moment of my entire life. Is what I said. This is what I said out loud. If there's a fourth beer in this in this fr if there's a fourth beer, this will be the happiest moment of my entire life. So I went to the fridge. Of course, there's no fourth beer. But then. This is the crazy shit. I come back to my room, and what do I spot sitting in a fucking corner on the ground, but a fucking unopened beer that I must have left from, like, a previous day uh, that I just never drank. It's warm and not nice, because it's been sort of sitting out in the light for, for a few days, like, warm for a few days, so it doesn't taste great. But it is a fourth beer, and I was so, I was fucking laughing manically. It was it was insane. It was it was the most insane occurrence of, of all time. I was like, what the fuck? A fourth beer. My life is complete. So I, I had this fourth beer. I drank the fourth beer pretty quickly. Uh, 
because at this point it was now like <clears throat> so, so wait let me rewind a little bit I I, I still I finished the Shinsei Kamatachan album and I was like that was good but it's not Shinsei Kamatachan enough I wanna I wanna I want something that's somehow even more Shinsei Kamatachan than that because uh, at one point I was reading the comments and it was talking about how there's someone had left a comment talking about how it's like a tw it's, it's it's twisted pop music. Obviously, everyone knows this, but I was thinking about that the whole time, and I I must have come to the conclusion this isn't twisted pop music enough. And so, <clears throat> here's what's going on. Here's what happened. So I opened that lo that fourth beer, and I also opened up Logic, and I'm like, I'm gonna fucking make. A bit, a more Shin I'm gonna out Shinsei Kamata chan Shinsei Kamata chan and so I'm I'm like okay Shinsei Kamata chan do these fucking like noisy pe like way too loud in the mix like basically I just sit down and I'm like I'm just gonna make a, a quick song just as a fucking outlet of just like noise and repetitive loudness that is like somehow twisted pop Shinsei Kamata chan inspired shit and so I make that song really quickly. Uh, <clears throat> while drinking, and I'm like, fuck, I'm just gonna make another one. I'm gonna make another one. I'm gonna make another one. And I made, and eventually, by the time it's like midday, it's like it's midday, and I spent like a few hours just making a bunch of fucking songs. Uh, and, you know, enough, and I'm, so I finally fall asleep. And then the next day, which is today, I wake up, and for some reason, I'm like, okay, actually, this is why. So I got woken up, I, I was woken up early, so I'm, like, fucking tired. But also, for some reason, like, way more hungover than I should be from just four beers, which doesn't make any sense. I'm trying to figure out why. Maybe I just didn't drink enough water, but I, like, I don't, I don't know why my body decided that I would be more hungover than usual, like, you shouldn't get a hangover from four beers. It's four beers. But for some reason, I was, like, more hungover than I should be. Probably because I didn't sleep enough. Either way, I felt like shit. And uh, definitely the depression be hitting because I could, don't have any motivation to do anything. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to keep working on these fucking songs that I made yesterday. I'll record some vocals for them. I'll make a couple more. So I made a couple more songs, recorded vocals for the ones I did yesterday. And... Uh, bam, I realised, oh shit, I, I basically made a whole fucking EP, like, I made fucking, uh, seven songs, and they're like, they're not short, they're normal length songs, I made like seven songs, what the fuck, and they're actually good, this is the weird part, is that they're, they're, they were supposed to be, like, they, they genuinely are all bangers, or I don't know if bangers is the right word, but they're actually good. They fit the exact emotion I was feeling so perfectly that it's almost ridiculous how how well I managed to articulate my feelings into music. Uh, which, you know, that being the only thing in the universe I'm good at, I fucking hope I can do it, but still, it's... Uh, I, I think I did a good job translating that into music. And, uh... <clears throat> so, therefore... Let me tell you what's going on, let me tell you what's happening, let me tell you the deal. When you watch this video, that album, which is called Kill Myself Immediately, yeah, well, again, not in a good place, uh, <laughs> when I made this, the, the album Kill Myself Immediately is currently out on x49sounds.bandcamp.com. If you don't know, x49 is my label that I run, uh, except that the label is entirely made of me. Everyone on the label is just me under a different name. Uh, so go to x49sounds.bandcamp.com and you will find, I'll, you know, I'll link it in the description, and you'll find the album Kill Myself Immediately <coughs> uh, and a bunch of other shit as there as well. Uh, if you want to listen to that, you don't have to. And uh, there you go, it's, it's out now. This is the first of the Sacred Cow albums. If you're a patron, you'll recognize one of the songs, and if you're in my Discord, you'll recognize one of the songs, because I posted one there. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, I think this album has a few surprises and shit that... Uh, a few good songs, just some good songs. I think you guys might like. I think it's a good 
I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I'm surprising. Like, I thought it was going to be a shit post. It turned out to be, uh, you know, surprisingly poignant. Uh, so there you go. There's, there is the album Kill Myself Immediately. Out now on x49sounds.bandcamp.com. No thank you. Kill them all. 4444 gang. Uh, Crab Stack. Uh, yes, thank you. And the 12 Killers. Uh, young Hats, uh, the, the, the Cop Killer Saurus Rex, you know who the fuck it is. So, my challenge to you is to make it through the entire album without skipping any songs non stop from start to finish. If you can do that, then, then you have ascended. If you, if it, because it's, uh, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot. <laughs> It's a lot to take in. So if you can make it through the seven tracks without without skipping, without without fast forwarding or anything like that, just just start to finish, then uh, then you have the right to call yourself an ascended music listener. And uh, this isn't pretension. This is a fact. So that was a story time with a relevant musical interlude, uh, which n- normally takes place in every single episode of The Sacred Cow. Uh, Except like not that that's just not true, uh, but now it's time for the the second. This is where normally the main chunk of the uh, the content is, where I would normally go on like a big rant about something pertaining to the title of this video. But I don't even know what the title of this video is yet, uh, so there's nothing to go on a rant about with that with regards to that. Instead, the rant. Uh, well, not a rant. I'm just gonna reveal some shit. I'm just gonna t- talk about some shit. The reveal is not the right word. Secrets, little east hidden, hidden pointers about, about previous old shit. Basically, you know how the patrons, you lovely fellas, Patreon me over here, there on patreon.com slash no thank you, the O's are zeros. Uh, link in the description is uh you know you, you guys are called the good the good person the good people if you paid you're a good person that started before i even had patreon uh, there's like a band camp subscription thing only one person ever did it someone called zeeks like just a bunch of zz and wises i don't know how to pronounce their name but uh that guy is subscribed to me on Bandcamp and it asks you what you want to call it and so I called it the Good Person Club. Why? Because at that time in my life I was just when I first started No Thank You. Uh, this this would be before I even released Volume 1. I was still working on Volume 1. I was going, I was sort of figuring out a lot of shit about my whole life I've sort of considered myself a bad person. I don't that has never changed. I still consider myself a bad person, even though I don't believe in morality anymore, or believe half the shit I was told I did was bad as a kid is bad. Like, there's other shit that I did that was awful. So, you know, I still consider myself a bad person. There's even a song about it on one of my albums. Uh, it's a really cheesy acoustic song. Uh, <laughs> don't listen to it. Um, but, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So it was just sort of playing, like, isn't it funny that a sort of just like some authority figure gets to decide uh, this is what it takes to be a good person, this is what it takes to be a bad person. Basically, it was like the beginning of my being like, hold on, all of this stuff that's in my been drilled into my head since I was a young child about how I'm a, I'm a misbehaviour, I've got bad behaviour, I've got bad, bad, bad brain disease, i got bad brains. Fuck, I'm not wearing my bad brains t-shirt. i got bad brains, there it is. Wow, this t-shirt is scuffed as fuck. Bad brains. Bad brains t-shirt. Uh, i got bad brains. All of that shit drilled into me was was like you know so heavily drilled into me. It was ridiculous. The, uh, and I, you know, I used to really, really think I had, like
I used to just consider myself very strongly to be everything I hated about the world that like all my problems had to come internally because it was drilled into my head that I like to not even think about systematic problems or that obviously at that point I wasn't even well actually a bit younger than that I'm talking before before the good person before no thank you that I was like a you know in school and actually at that point I'd been, you know, I'd already been kicked out of one school and stuff. All this shit went down. That was making me reconsider, like, oh wait, th this whole time I've been called a bad person. No one actually would ever say I was a bad person, but they would imply it very heavily. It, to basically, to the point where, what went down is, <laughs> I got in constant trouble, everyone seemed to hate me, blah blah blah. I, and at no point could I figure out what was going wrong which I now know is because I'm autistic and I can't read social dynamics. I don't understand. So they would tell me, uh, I would do something bad that I didn't know was bad. They would say, tell me that that thing was bad. And then I would not understand in what way it was bad. And so I'd do something similar again. But I didn't see any connection between it. And so for them, it was like, this guy's repeatedly doing dumb shit. For me, it was like, I'm just making a couple of mistakes here and there. I don't even understand how these things are connected. And like, how can you expect me to even know this shit? Like, do you guys, I don't understand what you even upset me for. All I did was what makes sense. All I did was what's logical. That's generally the process it went through. And so as I, this was going on, it was I was trying to figure out in my childhood brain, why the fuck do I keep acting like this? Why does everyone seem to treat me like this? And the conclusion I came to is that I must be a bad person. I'm talking, this is like during my childhood, that I must be whatever a bad person is, that's me. And that's why I had this idea of bad person, that that was the only possible explanation as to why all this shit kept happening. It must be because I am just a bad person. Uh, and so then, at this time, by the time, by the time I've gotten kicked out of one school, I've gone to another school and met people who are like worse than me, significantly worse than me. I'm talking like, people who, I don't know, I don't really want to talk about too much shit, but like, had sex with underage girls and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, oh, I'm not a big, not a bad person at all. These are bad people. Oh, you, you've killed people. I've met someone who's shot people. Yeah, oh, okay. And by the way, that's based as fuck, as I realize now. But it was like, oh, so my entire perspective has been warped by all these fucking... So, so you're telling me that my entire life I've been under this delusion and hated myself because I thought I was just born as a bad person. When in reality, it was just up to some unseen or seen authority figures. It, in fact, very much seen, two obvious, very obvious authority figures who would just get to decide that th this is this and this is this, like what constitutes a bad person in my brain. And so then I was, when I was making No Thank You, I was like, what if I do a little play on that? And I, I, I sort of, as a joke, uh, I'm like, well, this is now my domain. The No Thank You domain, this is me. This is, I am the fucking god of this era, right? Uh, <laughs> of, this, of this place. So I get to decide what makes you a good or bad person. Wouldn't it be fucking hilarious if I made it so that the only way that so that a good person just means someone who's literally given me money? <laughs> and that was the that was the joke at the time that I was making. And also, as a reference to that, when you subscribe to me on Patreon for the first time, uh, like when you first pledge, the message that comes up is like a in big bold text. It just says you are God. It's supposed you're supposed to put like oh thank you so much for your patronage, but it just says in bold text you are God, <laughs> as a reference to like uh, you know you don't don't let you're you're the God of your own domain. You don't have to pander to people in terms of you know all of this morality bullshit. Doesn't it's just fucking. And at this point you know I haven't even read Stoner. I, I this was just my own. Brain. Obviously, after reading Sterner, I understood more the concept of morality being a spook or whatever. Even though, you know, nowadays I'm a little more critical of Sterner than I was when I first read Sterner. Although I still don't believe in objective morality. Uh, 
but uh, but at this time, I was just very interested in that idea when I first started No Thank You, when I first put the Patreon together and stuff. So that is why it's called the Good Person Club, because it's a club for all the, the good people in my domain, which just so happens to be defined as someone who's given me money. Uh, I thought, you know, when I first made it, I was like, this is incredibly hilarious and clever, and everyone's going to see it, and everyone's going to think I'm a genius, because everyone will instantly understand all of this. Now, as I've kept going, making music and then videos, and I've put all of these little hidden symbolisms in everything, I've realised that no one notices any of it, because I don't know how to make things obvious to people. There's even an example in this series where I put the easter egg, I put the fucking eye card, thinking this was like way too obvious, and then, uh, you know, no one noticed it. Or, uh, a bunch of shit like uh, the, the storyline to No Thank You Volume 2, which no one noticed, or, um, I don't know, hidden easter eggs in, well not even easter eggs, just little symbolisms in my earlier videos, like in the Odyssey there's some symbolisms, in, in Moss, all of this shit. And I was like, this is super obvious, everyone's gonna... Because I assumed at that time that everyone consumed media, everyone saw media the way I see media, which is just like... Oh, this is a great time to talk about this. Look, it's a great segue. This was not on purpose, but I've been wanting to actually talk about this in the video for ages. Um, I'll finish this point, and then I'll go on to that point in a different segment. So I just assumed everyone consumed media in the same way I consume media, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, and so I didn't realise that no one noticed any of that shit. So, when I first put the Good Person Club, my idea was everyone's gonna think I'm so smart. Everyone's gonna think I'm so cool. And you'll notice that the idea in my brain never changed to that's not that smart. It just changed to it's still really smart but no one gets it. This is why I'm still a bad person. Because I still, for some reason, I'm deluded. I have delusions of grandeur that I, some, I mean, here, the proof that I have delusions of grandeur, do you need it? I just made, I, I'm in the middle of making a fucking, like, however many part series, and all I do is talk to the camera directly and tell you th tell you what to think, because I think I'm a fucking, I, I have delusions of grandeur, right? I think I'm important. I think I, for some reason, I think I'm entitled to have people listen to me. That doesn't make any sense. But, like, I'm aware of this, but I can't really stop it. I try and stop it, but whatever. And I also flip-flop from like, oh my god, I'm a fucking genius, to, oh, I'm a fucking loser, I don't know anything. And I, I, I try and stay in a grey zone of like, I'm just probably just normal, I'm probably just normal. But then it seems that the world is constantly trying to prove me wrong by shoving normies in my face. And the normies who are stupid, like, uh, oh god. Stupid normies. I don't like normies. I don't like human beings. I won't be happy till the nukes fall. I won't be happy till the nukes fall. That's my only opinion on life. I will not be happy until the nukes fall. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna end this here. Before I, I don't even know what the fuck I'm on about. Am I a bad person? Am I a good person? What is a person? Okay. Well, I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. That was a great start. This is the segment where I talk about how I see media and the world or rather how I'm confused about whether other people see the world in a similar way or not. And I don't understand it. I need your help to explain to me if I've gotten this right. So I don't think I understand the concept of immersion. I think that might be it. Specifically, I find it very annoying when media pretends that it isn't what it is. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense. Let me the the pretend it's a, I hate when media pretends that it doesn't exist. Uh uh like the easiest version of this is in video games and I don't even play that many games so I'm not particularly good at I don't have the best examples but think of it this way. Uh in old games like Doom and Quake right, or Mario 64, or something like that, these, or even older than that, even go back to, like, uh, 2D platformers, there was never, like, you go through a, a Quake level or a Doom level, and it's not like this space exists for people to 
chilling to feel as like a practical space because it knows it's not real. It's, it, you know that I know that you know that none of this is real. So why pretend that this is real when I could just make a good, interesting level? Like, you're not going to trick me. If if you if I played a Doom level that looked like a house, that had like a kitchen and a bathroom, or, or looked like a, a Mars base and had like, you know, like a realistic Mars base, would I... If you, you're not fooling me. I'm playing a vi this is a video game. I'm not on Mars. I'm playing a video game. What are you talk? What, what's the point? What's the point? Why would you do that? You know, what, what, what am I supposed to do? P think I'm in on Mars? No. Even better. And and well then you know of course immersive sims always existed. Uh, there's like that one that I forgot what it's called by the um, System Shock one. That's the one, right? And uh, the other one, I have never played any of these games, so I'm trying to remember it. Uh, Darkest Dungeon, is that what it's called? I don't remember. The, the first, the one that came, you know the one I'm talking about. You probably don't. You might. I don't, I, I don't know how well known that game is. The, the first, like, the first two big 3D games, there was Doom, and then there was, well, well there was Wolfenstein, actually. So there was, there was this one, like, fantasy that there was like a, a more realistic world and then there was Wolfenstein which was like a mm, focused on gameplay I forgot what the the fantasy one's called uh, I haven't played it it's like a more of an RPG type of situation uh, I don't understand those types of games I don't understand it because what do you want me to do? pretend I'm not playing a video game? I know I'm playing a video game or this goes into movies as well it, like I don't want a movie to pretend it's not a movie I know I'm watching a movie, uh, or I, what do I mean pretend it, uh, it's not a movie? As in like, to make the product worse because not doing so would break immersion or break the illusion that this world is real. There is no illusion. I know the world isn't real. What the fuck are you talking about? It's not like, uh, let's, I, I'm going to talk about anime because it's just why I know the best. Uh, it's like now and then here and there okay the reason i don't like that anime as much as i could like it is because the villain is overly cartoonish now why does that matter not because the villain being overly cartoonish m makes me realize i'm watching an anime i know i'm watching an anime because it's an anime i can see it what are you talking about no it it makes the film worse i mean the series worse because it it dampens the messaging and it makes the whole thing clunky because they are working instead of they have this realistic set well not realistic at all but like a that's what I mean you could there is no such thing as a hundred percent realism even documentaries aren't a hundred percent realism because the, someone chose what shots to keep in and what shots to leave out there's always nothing's real none of this is real none of this is real this isn't real because I, I wouldn't be phrasing it this way it, you know, I wouldn't be saying it out loud. I'd just be thinking it. None of this is real. If you think any of this is real, I don't know what to tell you. But uh, that should be obvious. But in films and books and all of this shit, it's this absolute, like, like puritanical refusal to admit that the world doesn't exist. As if the uh, admitting the world doesn't exist is gonna make is gonna ruin everything. It never ruins it. It sometimes makes it, it's sometimes neutral. Uh, sometimes, it, like, putting a little fourth wall break as, like, a throwaway gag or something, and it's not that funny, is, like, you know, neutral. It's, like, maybe the joke doesn't land, so it's not great. But it's never going to ruin it by breaking the fourth wall or even throwing in some sort of, comp like, I don't know, you know what I mean. Just, just forget... Like, at no point am I reading a book, and I forget I'm reading a book. I'm always aware that I'm reading a book, because I'm reading a... And, and I thought that this was how all people saw everything, until I started seeing so many people complain about, like, oh, this really pulled me out of the experience. What do you mean, pulled me out? You're not in the experience. You're just sitting there watching a fucking film. What are you talking about? I think people just don't see films in the same way that I see films. They don't see anything in the same way. Like, when I watched Shutter Island is the most recent film I watched. Great film, by the way. Uh, so at the beginning of Shutter Island, I saw all these little things, and I'm like, okay, 
so they, there's a there's a cut in shot to these cigarettes. They make a they make a point to mention the cigarettes. Clearly, these cigarettes are going to come up later. They make a point to mention, uh, you know, they make everything in a film is put there on purpose. There is no throwaway lines. Sometimes maybe there is in like a, a not very well constructed film, but in a good film, that like every line of dialogue is there for a purpose. Someone had to write it. Even in a f bad film that's badly written, someone sort of write it, so it's there. It's there for some reason, even if the reason is misguided. So there is no like, oh, I'm just letting this film wash over me. It's always like I'm. I can just see the pieces moving. I'm like, okay, so this is clearly this is the first act, and then I'm like, so for the first like t t t fifteen to twenty minutes of every film, I'm sitting there or a bit longer depending on the length of the film. Right, I'm sitting there and I'm being like, okay, okay. Waiting, just waiting. This is why I can't really get into film, because every film is the exact same thing. In fact, all media is pretty similar. You sit there and you're fucking waiting, because you know that, you, that they're going to have to spend 15 minutes of this film doing fucking nothing until they finally reveal what the main conflict of the plot is, right? So what am I supposed to do to entertain myself for those 15 minutes? That All they're going to do is be, you know, giving me, like, completely un... like just exposition and there's nothing wrong with exposition there's nothing wrong with exposition but it can be done well or it can be done badly like exposition by itself isn't entertaining but that doesn't mean that exposition is bad or boring or should be disguised because when they try and disguise exposition as something else it makes it incredibly obvious because they're trying to disguise it but they still have to do it because it's a film and I know I'm watching a film so I know you're expositing I know you're setting things up for later because it's the first five minutes of a film that's what you do in every film Oh God, kill me, kill me, kill me. So do people not see films like this? Do people, like, forget they're watching... Do people watch a film and just, like, somehow forget that they're watching a film? When you're playing a game like Call of Duty, where the guns are on the floor and they're not glowing, and there's or, like, a game that doesn't have a HUD because it's super realistic or something like that, and, and and you're like, wow, I'm really sucked into the game. Are you like that? No, games are just mechanics. All I think about is executing those mechanics. I play Counter-Strike because Counter-Strike is at no point pretending it's real. You you play as terrorists for fight for half of the game and then you switch over to play as counter-terrorists with no commentary on what that means. This, this game does not give a shit about realism. Uh, I mean, and the environments, like the worlds that you're in, the maps, they, they are like... They're actually kind of similar to Doom maps or, or some that sort of thing, where they sort of seem like a place that might exist, but then if you like take a second to think about the world that they inhabit, it doesn't make n any sense. Not like n there's roads leading to nowhere. There's fucking like inconvenient geometry houses that shouldn't be there. Windows and doors, windows that don't line up on the other side, doors that don't line up to the other side. All that. So there's all this sort of shit in Counter Strike maps. That's what makes them good because they're not supposed to be real. No, no one's playing Counter Strike, getting sucked in. Maybe they are. I don't. I don't know. What are you getting sucked into? The, 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 is this fucking the 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 episode of Doctor Who where that motherfucker sucks people's faces off for the TV? What is this? You're reading a book, and it's like uh, books are like. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't think it, I don't think it used to be this way. Like fucking paintings that pretend to be photographs. That shit. That shit's stupid. But they never used to be, do that. They used to be all about being cool. <laughs> they used to be all about being cool. They're still all about being cool. That's why modern art. That's why like non-realistic art had to happen. Uh, because art was art is gay. Art is full of gay gayness. Uh, and hopefully it only gets gayer. Um, but uh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, and I'm, I'm trying to think of a specific example of something pretending to be something that makes it actually actively worse. I think this is the best. The, like video games are the easiest medium. So in Doom 2016, when you kill a monster, a bunch of power ups and loot come out of it, as it does in a lot of games. Except in Doom 2016, they're bright and glowing so that you can very easily make them out in the heat of battle, right? A lot of games don't do that, and because you can't easily make them out, it makes the game worse because you're like running around, what the fuck, where did that thing go, you know? Running around looking at the ground, trying to, which is not fun. Whereas Doom is like, okay, everyone knows they're playing fucking Doom right now, let's not make any 
bullshit about it, just make them fucking glow because that will make the game better. Same with, in, in my opinion, with every story in the world. Stories that, like, the people for some reason assume that slice of life anime is supposed to be realistic. Slice of life anime is not realistic. Uh, it, it's not trying to be realistic either because real life people are fucking boring. No one wants to hang out with real life people. I hate real life people, especially people who are otakus, right? I want to fucking watch bullshit that would never happen in real life. You think fucking... Uh, this is kind of why I like anime because at no point is it pretending that it's not insane. You think fucking Gochumon wa Usagi Jessica, like that those type of person could survive past age two without being eaten by a fucking wolf? There's no way that's gonna happen. The, the, those characters could not possibly exist and neither could any other character in any other fiction. But in anime they don't pretend that they do exist most of the time. Sometimes they do. Uh, that's why I fucking hate when people are like Evangelion is like, what would happen if you put a real 14-year-old kid in a fucking mech? Bro, Shinji is not a, nothing like a real person. Shinji is not a real person. He's a collection of lines and ideas and voice lines. He's like the work of like probably a hundred different people, if not more, from colorists to uh, animators to the original character designer, to the voice actor, to the director who tells him what, or the script writer who tells, says what Shinji is going to say, you know, all of these people, that's Shinji. Shinji doesn't exist. So Shinji is not what would happen if a real person, no, Shinji is not a real person. He's a fucking collection of lines and ideas. And so is every other character in every piece of fiction ever. Why can't you accept that? Why do you need media to be realistic? Some stories are good when they are more similar to real life. Like, uh, the anime Rescue Wings, right, is somewhat, the characters, the way the characters behave seems more realistic and the conflicts seem more realistic. But in reality, they're super fucking contrived. There's no way that shit would happen in real life. Like, if you think about it for 10 seconds, there's no way. And that's fine that there's no way that that would happen in real life. You don't have to try and fix every little thing. There's nothing to fix. There's, there, there's no, like, oh, well, it wouldn't happen. No one would behave this way in real life. No one... It's not real life. That's the whole point of fiction, is that you don't have to make them behave like they would in real life. It doesn't have to be realistic. Realism is a... And that's why the entire thing of, like, realism is good or bad is nonsense, because realism doesn't exist. Even those fucking, like, uh, hyper-realist, uh, like, drawings and paintings that people do these days, where they, th th like, they draw something so detailed that, that it looks like a photograph, right? You've probably seen that sort of shit. Like, that still doesn't look like a real person. It looks like a photograph, because it's still flat. Even if you could model a human being perfectly in 3D, it still wouldn't be a real human being because it doesn't have a consciousness. Once it has a, once it's able to think for itself, then I will consider it to be an accurate portrayal of reality. But since no fictional character can think for itself, none of it is realistic. It's not why would realism even factor in? And realism isn't the point, it's immersion. Why would immersion factor in? Are people forgetting that they're watching films? Are people so stupid, so unaware of the world that they watch a film and just don't even notice they're watching a film? When the camera cuts, do they just think they blink it and suddenly teleported to another place in a real life? No, it's all fucking bullshit. What are you on about? What are you on about? What do you mean? What do you mean when you say immersion? What are you immersed in? What do you mean? Oh, it really takes me out of it. Oh, those sudden tone shifts in anime, they, they really just, they're too, they take me out of the experience. You were never in the experience. You were always a passive observer. What the fuck are you talking about? The experience only exists within your own mind. You take, take you didn't, you didn't go in or out of anything. What the fuck are you on about? I don't understand this this bullshit where it's a stupid way of making media, a stupid way of consuming media. It's fucking retarded. I hate everything about it and I don't understand it. Uh, there's my opinion. If you're a budding producer, uh, whatever you do, don't learn logic. Learn any other DAW. Probably Ableton is the best. Don't learn logic. This is my Mac. It does this now. 
you'll see in the middle it's completely black. This has nothing to do with me. It's unlocked and everything. Uh, there's no, nothing you can do about it. This just happens. I am starting to build a theory that it's to do with when it overheats. Uh, that it's to do with when it overheats. Because it does go back to relatively normal. This bit at the bottom still stays fucked up sometimes. But it, uh, and they replaced the monitor three times, which means not having my computer, aka my ability to make music, uh, to, uh, like, with more freedom, obviously I can still make music, just play it on guitar or something, but you know what I mean, is taken away for, multi like, two weeks normally at a time, and that's happened three times, and all these times, they've replaced the monitor, because they're too stupid, even when I directly told them in an email, thankfully it's still under warranty, so it's all for free, that the what is broken is not the monitor itself, it's the fucking drive, like, whatever drives the monitor. I don't know how computers work that well, but even I can fucking tell that, given the fact that the monitor is not what's broken, and it goes away and comes back, and still they can't fucking understand it, and it's fucking broken, and now I just have to live with it, because I now have to have my computer, for various reasons, I'm editing this series, first of all, I'm making a, f like, fucking important music that I can't just not make, so I need to have this around, I can't send it in repairs, and I have fucking uni work which I need the computer for, and I know that if I send it to them, they're just gonna replace the monitor again, and it's not gonna fix it. Stop doing it! What's wrong with them? Why can't they figure it out? It's been- it- I- I fucking hate Apple. Even though I don't even know. I, I want to figure out how to fix this myself, but it's super hard because you can't even open this yourself. You need a proprietary screwdriver, which I can buy off of like, you know, I, you can buy it if you if you know where to look. It's not that hard. But uh, even if I opened it up, I wouldn't know what to fix because it's all fucking put in there it's so tight because they need to make it super thin. Guess what? That ruins the fucking air circulation. This is the perfect machine. This is a perfect machine, right? This is a perfect machine, a ThinkPad. It's thick as fuck, but also about 20 times lighter. It's smaller, the screen is not the best, you know, it, it doesn't have a lot of stuff, it doesn't have as big a battery, all this doesn't, it has terrible speakers, like, you need to be using headphones, you cannot listen, like, use this without headphones if you want to listen to the audio, but guess what it does have? Uh, not a fucking broken screen, so it's actually usable. Yeah, I can actually use it to, to do things like a computer should do. <gasps> it's crazy, it's crazy, I can use it. Look, it's a computer that works, and it's running fucking Manjaro, not proprietary fucking Mac OS. I despise Apple. Everyone, look, okay, here's what I'm not going to do. Here's what I'm not going to do to my audience of almost 300 people. I am not... And I never would, because this would be a bad, a bad thing to do. I would, I, I am, and let me express this, this is not some sort of double entendre ironic thing. I would never, you know, d fucking, uh, I would never, you know, think of, of what, uh, um, think in a positive light of some sort of, physical violent attack on uh, any sort of Apple headquarters or building or, you know, something like that. Obviously, that would be a horrible thing to do. These people are basically innocent. They're not complacent in anything. Like, they're just doing their jobs. I, 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 so, you know, that's not something that can happen. Clearly, you know, that's not the, the right course of action. Uh, that's not the right course of action here clearly. Uh, again, that's not, I must stress, there's no, there's no, there's no double whammy, there's, this is not ironic that I'm saying that, of course, of course, it's not, that wouldn't be acceptable, that'd be violent and mean, imagine that, be, in, people, people would probably die, that would just, that would be bad, you don't want people to die, people dying, that's a moral wrong. That's a morally bad thing, not to mention illegal, of course. Uh, so, so that's why that can't happen. Um, you know, 
and th that's why that can't happen and and so therefore the only the only solution is to just con to just just to buy the next product because they'll put they'll probably fix it next time right maybe maybe they'll fix it oh yeah just buy the just buy the next product that's clearly the option here is to vote with your wallet so let the free market let the free market decide right you know i'm sure if everyone just bought thinkpads they'd start making thinkpads again it's not like hundreds and thousands of people buy thinkpads all the time they had the new thinkpads and nothing like the old thinkpads after they sold it from ibm so that's why i don't condone violence against any human being if i could go back in time and uh, kill baby Hitler. Well, I'll let you deduce the rest for yourself. Jewish lawyers tell me, and that's not a joke. This is not racism. I'm Jewish. You should know this. I'm I'm 100% Jewish blood. <laughs> uh, tell me that I need to once again make clear that I do not endorse any violence against Apple or Apple employees. Uh, so there's there's your there's your clarification. I do not endorse violence against Apple uh, or any of their employees or any of their infrastructure. So here's the fucking dealio. Here's the fucking dealio. I feel like I've said that multiple times this episode. Here's the fucking dealio. The next episode's probably gonna take a while because it's the finale. I want to make it at least half decent. You know, I want to make it at least half decent. <clears throat> so. Next, the finale episode of The Sacred Cow may not be that soon. But I now reveal the twist ending. The final episode of The Sacred Cow. Well, oh, shit. I've been waiting. I've been holding this in. I've been. I've been. I've been fucking no fapping. <laughs> Blue balling myself by not telling people this. The next episode of The Sacred Cow will release, and then immediately after, a new, mainline, serious, proper, no thank you album will come out. A proper no thank you album. The first one since To The Fairest that I've been working on for months. In my opinion, it is by far the best thing I've ever made. Uh, by a pretty long shot, yeah. I don't know if any of you are going to like it. Uh, so the next episode of The Sacred Cow will be mostly talking about that album and also wrapping up loose ends in the series. <clears throat> so this is the first... The first album came out today with this episode. This, this is just a warm-up because I made that all in like a day and a half or not even a day, but yeah. But this one I've been working on for ages. You will see. <clears throat> it's a good album. That's all I can say. Um, was there some conclusion I wanted to make in this episode? Other than that? What have I even been talking about? I know, this episode's, in my opinion, this episode's kind of shit. I was going to say something about, uh, like, mental health, but not my mental health, like, more something about people's attitudes toward mental health, but I think I'll save that for the next episode, because it's kind of relevant. Anyway, I believe... I believe that's it. Oh, yeah. No, I remember what I wanted to talk about. I want to talk about how... what my situation is right now, so... My mother is a nurse, as you may know. She's a nurse, and because she spent so... And this is just a theory. This is me psychoanalyzing her. Because she spent so long in hospitals, her standard for cleanliness is incredibly high. I believe it's part of, like, her contro a control thing. She wants to control stuff. She wants So she likes everything to be super, super clean. Obviously, I'm not a super clean person. I'm the exact opposite. My room is a tip. I, I like it that way. I, I find it... I I get uncomfortable when my room is too clean. I, f I feel alienated from, from my myself. I start feeling bad when my room is too clean. Uh, but regardless of that, 
often because my mother really likes everything being clean as well as her constantly tidying up around the house doing little bits she also hires a cheap eastern european cleaner lady who is like you know it's, it's kind of fucked because she's clearly like she doesn't speak english that well she's clearly an, an immigrant from uh, i forgot which country i forgot but from somewhere in eastern europe she's clearly like quite old probably has more skills than just being a fucking cleaner uh and also is clearly quite poor given that she like you can just like from the, she clearly is, isn't you know i feel i feel bad it it this, it feels like exploiting the working class you know <laughs> But my mum doesn't think that sort of shit through. She she sees oh, that's the commoners because she grew up in a posh household. Uh, uh, either way, the point being that she hires this cleaner to come occasionally and that cleaner will wake me up uh, 100% because she vacuums and comes into my room and does all sorts of shit. Uh, so she will wake me up whenever she arrives. And so I've been sleeping at like midday, but she will probably get here, the cleaner will probably get here at like 3 p.m. So there's no way I can sleep at midday. Uh, and if she gets here at 3 p.m., she stays for two hours. So basically the point I'm trying to make here is that I'm going to be awake for a long fucking time. Well, not that long, but I'm going to be tired as fuck, which is why <coughs> I am drinking the finale of this this uh coca-cola beverage which contains caffeine and to keep me to keep me going uh hopefully i can stay awake but uh you can look forward to that in the next episode of the sacred cow my manic rumblings as i start to become more and more sleep deprived but there's an upside to this the upside being, this may push my sleep cycle even further to my possibly favourite version of sleep cycle, which is this. Waking up at like 1 to 3 a.m. Because you wake up, it's pitch black outside, no one else is awake, and instead of waking up and immediately being harassed with sounds and smells and people talking to you and all that shit you wake up and you're completely alone and it's completely peaceful and pitch black outside and it's just great and then by the time you're like fully if you wake up at like three you get to chill for a while and then when when you've been awake for like a few hours and you're fully ready to go you're fully awake you've been awake for like five hours or something it's now like midday it's now like midday actually that's not how maths works but what i mean is it's now at that point it's then the daytime which means i can then record music without worrying about people so normally i get all my musical ideas like i'm a night i'm a night person and that also means i'm more i'm better at working when i'm like closer to going to sleep so or as the day goes on so as the day goes on, it actually bec- I can actually record music and sh- and shout and sing and play guitar and shit, and so that's cool. <coughs> uh, so there you go. That that might be the possible side effect of this situation, but you you will have to s- check in with me in the next episode of the Sacred Cow, uh, w- uh, which will contain footage of me in my more sleep deprived state. Uh, and we'll see if I'm actually that sleep deprived or if it actually is just a couple extra hours awake, no big deal. Uh, we will find out soon enough in the sacred cow. So tune in next episode. Go listen to my fucking album because that shit is, it's a, okay, it's, you, you, I, it's, a, it's, a, it's out there. It's very out there. It's, it's very much out, it's very much out there. But it is also, in my opinion, a very accurate representation of the, the emotional state that I was in as I was making it very honest music uh so there you go sacred cow sacred chow